I grew up as a kid in New York City, and I was a city kid. I didn't know the difference between a maple and an oak. Nature was something I learned about, like, oh, cheetahs, those are really cool, or dinosaurs, or outer space, or whatever. And when I was a teenager, I just wanted to play music, like loud, heavy, raw, punk rock music, heavy metal. And I don't think as a teenager I would have imagined myself like hanging out with wildflowers. So what happened, I think one of the things was, as as a teenager, like, I was really angry and critical. Um, I was angry and critical of society and the system we were in and what was happening to like, people and the earth. And I don't think I have the personality type where I can just be fueled by anger. I needed something that I could care about. I needed something that I could be a, help be a healer. And it took a long time, but when I was almost 30, my wife Rachel and I moved out to the woods and I fell in love with plants. Locals call this part of New Jersey the Highlands. It's not that high. It's a landscape of soft hills and stream valleys. But during the last ice age, this was all glaciated. In fact, the glacier stopped here or maybe a couple miles south. Five years ago, I spent a lot of time here. I did botanical survey work here. It's one of the nicest places that I ever worked. A lot of really cool plants here. The park's about 2,000 acres. The park managers don't want us to mention the name of this park during this documentary because the plant that we're going to go look at, they're concerned about poaching pressure on it. It's a plant with a cultural history, medicinal, and food uses. But where we're going right now is an overgrown old marble quarry. This marble formed maybe a billion years ago under the ocean floor out of pre-existing limestones, dolomites. It was metamorphosed under extreme pressure. And it offers something to these plants that the other rock types here may not. In this case, a lot of calcium. All right, this is our spot. We made it. This is what we walked in for. See this little clump of seedlings on the ground? These are little baby wild gingers. In fact, there's some coming up over here that aren't even showing their true leaves yet. So these just germinated. And what we're seeing is somewhat typical for wild ginger in that the seedlings are coming up right near the parent plants. Wild ginger has these tubular barrel-shaped flowers right close to the ground. You have to really crouch down and sometimes dig under the foliage to see them. They have these three spreading lobes and everything inside is in multiples of three. It's a really cool looking flower if you get down there and check it out. The seed disperser for wild ginger is primarily forest ants. Typical dispersal distances for woodland wildflowers that are moved by ants, including wild ginger, are less than a meter a year. Given that we spent a couple hundred hours surveying 2,000 acres here, and this is the only bit of wild ginger we found, it raises the question, how the hell did this get here? How did this ginger find this place in a sea of 2,000 acres of potentially unsuitable habitat with its primary vehicle as forest ants? Dispersing across couple hundred or a couple thousand acres, it's hardly the most remarkable journey that wild ginger has taken. 
During the last ice age, wild ginger was pushed way south, probably down into the Carolinas. In a paper I was reading, the authors took a look at this. How could a plant that is dispersed usually less than a meter every year if it's lucky, make it from, let's say the Carolinas, back up into New Jersey or even up into Canada? We don't, we don't really know how or why. They suggest that there could be exceptional events where the seed is stuck in the feet of some mammal and dispersed longer, or maybe tornadoes or hurricane. But the fact is that our entire flora moved up from refugia in the south in the last 16,000 years and populated all across the eastern deciduous forest. And many of our woodland wildflowers, even our trees, are fairly dispersal limited. We don't really understand how ginger could have populated any given spot, how it could have gotten to this little marble quarry here. And we definitely don't understand how it could range as widely as it now does. Alien gardeners. Um, aliens are always a good explanation for everything. Thank you, Jared. Other Jared. <laughs>